Hello, my name's Kevin Windridge. I work for David Orton at Rectory Farm Lower Swell near Stow on the Wold in Gloucestershire. We farm 570 acres. We have 200 cows rising to 300 cows. The unit is brand new. It was built in 2003. And when we first set out to design the, the farm system, we set out with the highest standards in mind. And to that end, um, we've got a totally integrated system of uh, irrigation and um, farm waste product using um, farm waste products to um, reduce the amount of inputs we bring into the farm. Um, the cows are averaging 9,000 litres at present and we hope to, to go up to 9,500 litres so obviously we've got quite a few products to use efficiently on the farm to try and grow grass without the fertiliser. This is a field in close proximity to the farm and at different times of the year we will accumulate dirty water in the pit and use with the tanker onto these um, silage fields. This particular um, field is a good example because it's a last year's seeds field. It's already been cut three times. We're talking about the end of September and it still grows green fresh grass. We have other fields that we're applying dirty water on and it um, tends to avoid the rust and um, slow growth towards the end of the season. This is one of the grazing fields in close proximity to the farm that we run both the irrigation system and the tanker on um, after subsequent grazings. This field has not had any bagged fertiliser on at all um, for the entire year and it continues to grow as we see it now at the end of September. The automatic scrapers uh, channel the muck down to this end and it all goes into the grids into um, an underground channel which is only about two meters deep and along into the separation reception pit. The passages are scraped out six to eight times a day depending on which um, group is housed at the time. Immediately before each milking and then about half an hour after every milking at midnight and at midday. When we first installed the scrapers, about a month after we got here in uh, February 2003, it didn't take the cows any time to get used to it. The cows walk over or round the plinth, which is designed against the feed passage. We operate the separator in normal mode during cheap nighttime tariff, and you wouldn't obviously see most of what you can see today on the film. It, the separator goes through um, a number of time sequence events, um, starting with a mixer which comes in for three to four minutes before the pump lifts the material up into the separator and then obviously it goes through the separator um, and out the other side. We um, remove the separated uh, material every couple of weeks so the uh, heat behind me is two and a half weeks worth from um, basically just short of 200 cows. Um, which we actually store in windrows and we have um, a small worm farm which then create a very rich black compost that we put back onto the fields that aren't looking very good or fields that we can't get to um, very easily with other um, methods of irrigation. But we do monitor from time to time to make sure that the overflows aren't blocked and the weir is set correctly because occasionally, although it's not very often with um, powdered sawdust being the bedding, you can get a build-up on the weir and in order to, to keep the separator working at its optimum we obviously need to monitor its progress. We operate the irrigation gun at night, um, on also on cheap electric. Um, we'll run it for three hours and then a stop and then another three hours on any one stand. That gives us a sufficient nutrient value on each stand and we can get round the entire grazing paddocks. We have basically um, changed from using fertiliser on any of the grazing fields in the immediate vicinity of the farm by using both the irrigation gun and the tanker on the surrounding headlands or difficult paddocks that we can't get the irrigation machine onto. So we're now up to 100 acres that we don't use any nitrogen fertiliser on at all and we believe that in using dirty water irrigation as early as we can then we get an early bite um, although you won't see a lot of top grass growth you'll tend to get a lot of root development and we also don't tend to get the same burn-off effect in later months. 
As we expand the system across the farm, we hope to increase the quality of the crops and the grass grown rather than the quantity, thereby reducing our overall costs. And with TMR feeding, there isn't the same importance for, for grass growth rather than quality because they're only grazing for six to seven hours of the day and we're, we're actually feeding them for um, maintenance plus 30 inside.